Distinguished colleagues, I would like to show you our experience of use high dose brachytherapy for PC patients. That's the special um, brachytherapy installation with letter A. Letter A here shows the uh, ultrasound 3D chamber. This chamber has three dimensions uh, imaging, and uh, it works with the special staple and sensor. And it's also compatible with uh, radiation 3D therapy design. Here you can see our work, our practical work. The doctor is inducing needles with the 3G ultrasound guidance and simultaneously we can see image of needle surroundings. to check for the distribution. Uh, everything is ready for work, so we can start treatment procedures. This slide shows the dose distribution. Doctor watching the design system can observe uh, A relevant distribution around each needle and the equipment, the shells, the overall distribution around pre-state gland. That's what our experience showed. That's the pre-state uh, gland before we started intervention and that's how it looks like after the needle inductions they are completely different that's why we try to do as follows we calculated the number of indicators that characterize the needle distribution and the effort was worth it that's the patient that gets 100% of the prescribed dose. What did we get in reality? That's the plan without adjustment. Uh, almost 40% got less than 80%. And uh, here, 80% of patients didn't get the prescribed dose. And only 20% did that for with the adjustments and uh, needle replacement according to the uh, structures I showed we got 97.1% of efficacy and 2.9% got from 80 to 90% of efficacy instead of 41% we also calculated the D90 dose, that's the minimal dose that uh, gets to the 90% of the PC volume. Uh, with our patients, 95% of them got that instead of 20 that we had before adjustment, and 40% of patients got the under dose uh, compared to the subscribed one. We adjusted the D10 indications, that's the maximal dose that is taken to urethra. And we also got the expected results. Over 115% of the prescribed dose was received by 18.6% with the adjusted uh, procedure, the figure dropped to 2.9%.
and the prescribed dose was received by 97.1 percent of patients. We can conclude in this way that the uh, cutaneous brachiotherapy is the mandatory component of effective and uh, safe uh, with adjustment is the uh, effective and safe way to do brachiotonomy therapy. That's the uh, table that shows the uh, high dose and low dose uh, brachiotherapy. It's difficult to compare them because uh, with high dose therapy, we have more accurate uh, treatment plan uh, performance. The possibility to uh, implant with the big uh, pre PC ability f to fraction, which is uh, more interesting in terms of radiobiology and so on. These are the risk groups. We uh, took a lower risk group and the intermediary risk group and disregarded the high risk group. We had 360 implantations for patients with uh, low and intermediate risk. CTV with lower risk included the pre state, uh, pro state only, and CTV with intermediate risk included prostate um, and three millimeter around the capsule. What were what was the dosage? With lower risk, we had we usually had three fractions with 11.5 gray. That makes 144 gray with intermediary risk. We had three fractions. And two fractions um, that give us uh, 144 and 108 biologically effective dosage. With the uh, biological regression, we, we for biological regression we consider maximal reduction of uh, PCA plus two nanogram per milliliter. The complications uh, in accordance with their talk criteria and so on. The uh, observable time period was from 40 to 41 months. Um, f with 11 patients, we uh, observed the uh, bounce phenomenon. The uh, signs of biochemical regression were identified with three patients. Uh, and they were treated with school line. The uh, complications with the uh, urine system of two, uh, there were zero complications f with grade three. Two patients had repeated catheterization. Uh, six patients uh, required macrogematuria. And uh, in majority of cases, we ended up with conservative treatment. Uh, sometimes we had epidemitis and post-treatment, uh, post-surgery stage, which is kind of weird treatment. And in two cases, we had the neuritis of the uh, uh, knee nerve. The uh, prolonged results were the third grade complications in 1.4 percent, the uh, stenosis of membrane uh, urine cut, and in one case after the combined therapy, uh, we had the stone formations in the bladder. But. Uh, the point was that we failed to recognize the uh, uretic arthritis with him. Uh, Sixty percent of uh, patients had the uh, index uh, rank of uh, IIEFS uh, rank of 12. 
that is the lack of uh, erectile function. 71% of patients did not change its ranking f uh, for erectile function, and only 9% required the uh, administration of uh, five phosphoridase uh, inhibitors. And after the treatment, they were fine. In a number of uh, cases, we had some doubts about the efficacy of our approach with the percutaneous brachiotherapy, and we added some stereotoxical therapy to get some distant radiation from 40 to 55 gray. The uh, exposure of moderate dose at microscopic uh, lesions uh, in the prostate and lymph node allowed us to avoid some complications. The effectiveness of high dose brachiotherapy includes. Uh, so it does not depend on the volume of prostate. We can irradiate uh, seven vesicles and prostatic uh, fiber. The time of radiation within 20, 30 minutes and uh, high precision is provided. Conclusion, high dose brachytherapy is efficacious and safe method of monotherapy with prosthetic cancer of intermediate risk group. Uh, high precision of the dose provides favorable safety proper preservation of uh, control over uh, uh, the tumor and optimal uh, relation between high efficacy and low toxicity allow to consider high dose brachytherapy as a method of choice while treating patients with uh, uh, prosthetic uh, cancer. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love your presentation. I wanted to ask you, it's very important for the audience, will you tell us if these patients who went through brachytherapy didn't have uh, if there were distant radiation, would you include only prostate with seven vesicles or a lymph outflow? Of course, a lymph outflow zones would also be included into the zone of radiation. But you've shown that with local radiation, there are such wonderful results. I mean, uh, high risk groups. But second, I mean, uh, just few intermediate risk groups where we had some doubts, but uh, I cannot understand that if we radiate half of the pelvis with the guts so with such high volumes uh, with the local methods, of, while the local methods of treatment uh, have uh, chosen such high, uh, have proven high efficacy, 100% relapse free uh, life. So the majority of people stick to the position. Uh, well, I would understand that opening doctor statement when they performed lymphadenectomy and absence of leaf nodes were confirmed. We did that. Uh, there was a study that was really useful. At any rate, it allowed to exclude a lymph collector zone. Such convincing data, such serious studies. Uh, I believe that uh, we'd rather study it further on in terms of identifying a group of patients where we could avoid uh, radiation of lymph collectors. Uh, yes. Uh, in some groups of patients, uh, this distant therapy could be avoided. And only some small part. Uh, there are two groups. The group for intraticio high dose uh, therapy and stereotaxic laser therapy, where we give 7.5 gray per fraction and end up treatment within five days. And there is comparison of these groups. 
so far we've had an impression that they're practically identical 